Welcome to a show about things you can see Without going far and a lot of them are free If you thought there was nothing in the old heartland You ought to hit the black op with these fools in a van Look out, they're driving hard Checking out art in their own backyard Randy does the steering so he won't hurl Mike's got the map, such a man of the world That's done with the camera, kinda heavy on his shoulder And that giant ball of tape, it's a world record holder Look out, they're driving hard Checking out art in their own backyard Look out, they're driving hard Checking out the world in their own backyard Checking out the world in their own backyard Isn't there some kind of law against this? Hi, Don the Camera Guy slash Bellboy slash Personal Assistant for those two TV weasels who end up grabbing all the glory anyway. Want to hold that coffee for you? Yeah, I need to t turn a page on the map. Here we are in Canyon City, just miles from that gorgeous Royal Gorge, nosing around some neighborhood, circling the block in search of a Flintstone house that one of them read something about some time ago. I think that's okay. it right there. Yeah. And, well, yeah. rapidly concluding it won't play much of a part in this television program. Yeah, that's okay. it. That's it. Well, yeah. We don't tell America that everything we find is going to be sensational, do we? It's gonna get better, you people at home. <laughs> Pretty much got to. <laughs> There's your damn mountain shot. Too bad the windshield's not a little cleaner. Don, could you, could you get out and take care of that too? <laughs> With those majestic Rockies looming up ahead, we reversed course and headed for the flatlands, eating Corvair dust all the way to Pueblo. Now, even on a show like this, which looks for creative folks with something unusual to say, who knew we'd find such a perfect example right here next to the Santa Fe tracks? Poet and painter Tony Perniciaro, a.k.a. Tony the Bricklayer, has been a Coloradan since the 70s. But before that, he lived and worked in an entirely different world, New York City. I grew up in an underworld enclave. Very, very heavy Sicilian enclave. I wrote a, I wrote a book published by Dell. Yeah, I ran away from home at 47. I was the most fired, most intimidated, the most insulted bricklayer in American history. I'd like you to ask why. I have to ask why. <laughs> Humiliated, did I throw that in? Yes, yes. Yeah, because in something inside of me said, expressed to the bricklayers everything they were terrified by. If nature had a mind, it would also have been a liar like me. All that I know that children should know, because it's children's work. The work of a grandpa liar. That's the best I can be. When did you do these? The, these were done within the last uh, five years. And this is all paint garbage that paint stores throw out. What comes first, Tony, the, the painting or the, the phrases? They, they mix. It's the only time, you know, that space, paint, ideas, and uh, pre alzheimer come together in a marriage. I don't remember anything. It's a beautiful part about it. I lost all my memory, except the last time I had lunch. <laughs> What'd you have? I had lunch. I, I gotta go take my Alzheimer medicine. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody died, even the living. I did this yesterday. Nobody ever believed me except children and the mad. It's a nice day if you don't look. 
I try to make paintings of everything I think. I, 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 I don't know, I, I throw these out at random. I like what you got here. The worst catastrophe in history is repetition. Don't ask you what that means. This is a thinking person. He has to get in humanity's head. I hear people that are crying to get out of where they're, the heads they're in. Some try with booze, some with religion, some with eye wash. I believe in car wash, but I don't drive. You know, you know what I mean. Even when, when you don't know what I mean, you know what I mean. Children do. There should be 300 million artists in this country. And like Lincoln said, oppressed people, it's a must for them to revolt. Thomas Jefferson said we should, we should, we, we should have one after every commercial. <laughs> when you can make him laugh, man. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. I got my eyes on you guys. <laughs> has this been a good place to do the work? This has been a sacred place because you're hated, ignored, unwanted, and it's isolated. So I, I, I worked with at-risk children here. And uh, to me, they gave me the strength and the desire to communicate to the rest of the children of the world. And the paintings just keep coming? No, the no. paintings keep coming because to breathe is to lay a brick on a temple you'll never live in. Now, Tony does have a way of leaving you speechless, so it's a good thing we had something to show him. Being a bricklayer, we figured he could appreciate how much labor goes into creating the world's largest ball of videotape, which he did, and that allowed us to take a piece of Tony with us back on the road. A road where kitchen appliances grow larger than I've ever seen before. But noticing that the lens might need a little cleaning proved to be a bad move on my part. What would we do with that, Don? What would you do with that extra 50 bucks a day? <laughs> You're up to that? Spanky mags, probably. <laughs> now it wasn't long before those wide open spaces of eastern Colorado gave way to one of the fastest growing cities in all of America. Colorado Springs has the Air Force Academy, the Garden of the Gods, and a yard full of what must be the world's largest sculptures. These wind-blown babies were the work of one man, Star Kemp, who also built the house in front of which they stand. He uh, started out whittling figurines out of wood and little birds. And then he um, started some paintings and sculpture. And he always wanted to do a monumental wind sculpture. He could do something very quickly because he already knew. Growing up on the farm, his ancestors were clockmakers and architects and mechanics and, you know, carpenters. So he grew up knowing how to do all this. He would put it on the drawing board, like probably one inch to a foot, cut out a paper pattern and then cut it out in steel and then weld it together. The next process was to dress down the welds, of course. He always dressed them down very smoothly so he couldn't even see a weld. He started with the smaller one up by the front of the house near the kitchen called the charger. And then the windmill-like one, I believe it was his second one, called Spirit of the Wind. The one that looks like a weather vane is uh, the space needle. One of Kemp's pieces also catches the breeze downtown, but there's nothing quite like coming around the corner 
and seeing the whole herd in their natural habitat. The mountains is what inspired him to do his artwork. He loved the rocks and trees and mountains and so everything in nature inspired him and that's why he chose this piece of property. He loved uh, the fact that the sculptures had the backdrop of Cheyenne Mountain with no other houses behind it. <laughs> now watching these guys drive in circles is actually kind of amusing, but not very good TV. So I feel a postcard coming. Guess where we'll be tomorrow? Look left, look right. Look left, look right. How lost do you think I can get in Denver? Oh, I think you can get pretty lost here, it's just my guess. We need to do some laundry while we're here. Yeah, we do. You know, just on that off chance, I got an old friend who lives here. Hello, Robin? It's Mike. No, no, it's Mike from seventh grade. Don't you remember me? You got a house here? Uh-oh, looks like another weasel nice moment in the making. Appliances? I'll keep rolling for insurance purposes. Hey, you mind if we drop in and take a look? Yeah, excellent. <laughs> oh. That's wow. good. Could I just have a touch too? A little sure, warmer? Sure, whatever. Anything else I can get for you? Is there any food? <laughs> like, that would be good. It looks like condiment heaven to me. Delicate or knit? Do you want this folded? Hey, Robin, can I use your bathroom? <laughs> oh, would you mind putting that in the car? Just, oh, I, you know where it goes. I stepped in some dog poo. <laughs> <laughs> Could you get me a rag or something? <laughs> Oh, no, put the ball. After you put the ball, put the ball away, away in there. The ball, the ball, ball comes for us. God, Robin, you're too good. You're too good to us. Oh, Robin, thank you so much. So... <laughs> Bless her heart, Robin did survive her rodent infestation. But as for me, the heat is on again, literally, as we scoot across the Mile High City. Now in search of a house we've been told is brimming over with buku birdhouses. It's kind of like the guy in Houston. A lot like the man in Houston. Now that we've found it, we're ooing and aahing, but as usual, moving right on because as usual, there's no time to spare. Seems these producers are hot for pots. Bill Potts, that is, a carver who lives out by the airport. Gators and fish and even sax playing presidents just keep coming from the tiny garage where Bill's lifelong love of working with his hands has turned into a full-time occupation. Well, you look at the bulletin board and there's bills from your creditor. <laughs> Motivation, hmm? People say, well, how can you do this artwork? It's simple, when you're poor and you don't have much, what do you have next? Imagination. See, yeah, I get, people donate me wood, four by fours, when the wind comes through, blows fences down, old fence poles are easy to work with. Now I can do it, uh, one big piece of wood, but what are the prospects of finding a big piece of wood? Plus, I try to keep my overhead down. And I use scary tools sometimes. I use meat cleavers. Is music a vital part of what you do? Definitely. Like sometimes, like I like a lot of Latin music. It's that rhythm. It makes you feel, uh, what's the word, not angelic, but uh, agile. Charlie Bird Parker. He's kind of the Mozart of jazz, all right? B.B. King, he's everybody's sweetheart of music and stuff. And he kind of looks like you in this version, doesn't he? I mean, uh, I, don't I see a little Bill Potts in this movie? I, I, I've had so many people tell me, said, Bill, do you know a lot of your work, see, you see how your forehead is? Said, it looks like you're putting you in there. And I said, maybe, I don't know. It's a good thing I can do this. It's not what we call it, real lucrative, but what the heck. One time I was at an art show and this lady says, I don't like folk art. It's bland, it's not dynamic. And I think this is what artists do when they can't make it in a regular medium. And I'm standing there, I said, mm hmm I wish you could work for me for about a week, hitting my thumb, splinters, knocking cans of paint over, making mistakes, <laughs> frustration, all of it. A lot of times you want to take your work, go bam, you know, but most artists go through that, I think. Yeah. Bill's skills do bring to mind some old timer whittling away in some old mountain town, but he says he's happy here in Denver. 
and Denver's just close enough to Boulder that we've decided to cram in one more stop before the day is done. Well, I'm not sure what first tip they offer. As usual, details are sketchy, just that it's a yard and we'll know it when we see it. It's not your everyday ordinary yard. I've got a lot of storage problems and so I store my things in the front yard. <laughs> So here they are. I can't put them all in my house. I've got so much stuff in my house already. They're just kind of blessing the yard and the garden and protecting the house and, you know, just our ordinary, you know, goddess type of duties. Oh, it's, it, they're just going to start filming me the whole time. Yeah. I had a friend who had boxes and boxes of rivets and to help him solve his rivet problem, I bought some boxes of rivets for a very handsome price. The yeah. rivets show up and, wow, that's what I'm going to do now. Yes, definitely. I get inspired by something and then I work with work through that for a while and then when I get tired of it, I work something else. I used to work in clay for a long time and got tired of clay and so I learned how to weld. I took a trip to Nepal and so I got involved with looking at the goddess thing with uh, lots of arms. After I went to uh, Nebraska, which is a lovely state, They've got this huge migration that comes through their sandhill cranes. They don't really look like sandhill cranes, but... Well, this is a muffler part, and this is a tank, acetylene or oxygen or some kind of tank. And this is, this is just sheet metal, and that's a wheel from a car. I don't know. Excuse me, I'm scratching him. I got an unbearable itch. He's scratching his... Yeah. And that was, the other, that was the other thing you had in mind when you put this here, wasn't yeah, it? So yeah, it was, a, it was a cat scratch and a human a forearm Cam scratch. Camera guy scratching post. <laughs> yeah. Is this bumper about to be something? I just found this in the dumpster the other day. I thought it was pretty nice. Did you like it? Dumpster oh, dog. my goodness. I picked it up. Come on, Randy, you can do it. <laughs> 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 it's living you hard. Just, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. It's, it's really nice, but the dog gets very tired of standing there. Of course, Christine would like to see her art in other people's yards as well. She's even working with the city on a mural and skunk spraying fountain and seems to be eyeing our all too naked bumper with considerable glee. I expect to see this on the front of the car in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> or, or they'll be heck to pay. Is that a, a ritual bloodletting that it is. makes my the morning, show go better? My morning shave and bloodletting. Speaking of carnage, it has come to our attention that the cafeteria here at CU is named for Alfred Packer, the only American ever convicted of cannibalism, which we would like to show you, but once again, Randy's taken to driving aimlessly around this beautiful campus. Oh, uh, we're gonna have to go to grad school. <laughs> now, Boulder is known as the kind of place where out of the ordinary is pretty much par for the course. Take Jennifer Heath, for example. A few years back, she coaxed some of her most artistic friends into painting works on black velvet to show and publish in a book. Reason enough for us to drop by for coffee and a schmooze. I really have to see this show. I cannot believe that you're gonna, that you're actually shooting people coming out of the stairway. Another thing you won't believe coffee. is the camera guy's the narrator. <laughs> <laughs> I open it up and I'm reading the scholarly intro here. <laughs> and there's actually a big history to black velvet painting. Who to funk? <laughs> velvet painting has been around for very, very as long as there's been velvet. People have painted on it. And the fact that it's velvet gives it a mystery and a lusciousness and a you know kind of luminosity that I think lends itself to our ideas of what spiritual icons should look like, you know. Wasn't that why Elvis was so so often shown on Black Velvet? Sure, Elvis is both heroic and kind of a religious, but mostly for gringos, not so much for Mexicans at all. There's John Wayne and Geronimo, and then there's the heroic slash spiritual aspect of Velvet, where you have Jesus and the Virgin Mary, and sometimes saints. The Last Supper, of course, is big. And those are actually, I mean, they seem laughable probably to you, but they actually are often used in people's homes and taken seriously. We were able to, to pick this up here in, in Genoa, and I was struck by the, the sort of medieval hippie imagery here. <laughs> 
That is one of the worst paintings I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, it kind of caught our eye. I'm going to bet this had a companion, a, a boy. Probably. I'll bet you. But we yeah. couldn't afford the boy because it's a public TV show. <laughs> really, the 10 bucks we put out for this was about what we could afford. I got him down to six. Got, got him down, down, to, down six. to six. Jennifer thinks we should head south to Golden and see the Mother Cabrini Shrine. But considering it's halfway up a very big mountain, I'm not disappointed that we're headed north instead. Now regular viewers of this program, and you know who you are, may realize two things. One, Mike loves to find Lady Liberties. And two, we all like to play a little catch. And both became possible here on the shore of Loveland Lake while a raging fire burned across the way. So what do you think, you guys? Want to burn a few in? We've never played catch in Colorado. Do you realize that? Well, we've been playing catch up ever since we got here. Giddy with mountain air, we threw a few and then headed for the zoo. The Sweatsville Zoo, that is. Nestled in the Poudre River Valley just outside Fort Collins. More stuff than you could shake a stick at. It's named for Bill Sweats, a dairy farmer who's covered three acres with metallic whimsy since first getting the urge back in 1985. Is it playing? Yeah, it's supposed to be a hobby. <laughs> the train of business because it's negative cash flow. <laughs> Who's this guy? That's Willie the Welder. That's a self-portrait. Really? Doesn't that look about right? When did you realize you were on to something? When people started stopping and looking at it. I started, just had a few of them in my front yard and people started looking at them and it just grew. I'd never done any artwork till 85 when I started. So it just... Uh, you don't look 85, come on. <laughs> well, you've got a, a mower guard right here. This is a cultivator shovel. These are uh, uh, gears out of the back end of a car, push rods. Those are discs off a, a disc harrow. They're set up in a gang eight inches apart. We've got a motorcycle gas tank here. That's a sourdough pea. Can't you see the tobacco juice just dripping off of there? <laughs> this is called dreaming in reality. Here's dreaming. Right. And here's reality. So do you, do you get an idea and sketch it out, or you just no, start? can't draw nothing. Can't draw a lick, huh? No. They're all built in my head before I even start. And how many people run around here on a given day? We have from 15 to 20,000 a year. People just pull it's off the It's a zoo highway. around here most of the time. I got a Tyrannosaurus Rex out here that's got four fingers on him. He's supposed to have two. <laughs> Golly, did I ever get ripped up on that? <laughs> the doggone kids will catch it. It's working. It's working. I'm going nuts. What's the band? Who's playing tonight? They're called Two and a Half. They play this new kind of music, this heavy metal junk. <laughs> Real tinny sounding, isn't it? <laughs> These are pretty uh, trendy fellas. I guess they're fellas. I, I wouldn't call that gal a fella. <laughs> But once you're done with one, you're done with it. You're I'm done with it. it. I'm off to something else. This is my last one. This is floor sweepings. Anything that's left on the shop floor, I used it. Bill's work, it's fantastic. It's very, very incredible what he does. And he also is very good to people. Among those people would be Lanny herself, owner of the Chrome Rose Gallery, which sits here on the zoo grounds, too giving her the perfect opportunity to mix artistic ideas with those good grades she got in welding school. Look at that, a 4.0. We've never met anybody <laughs> who did that well in anything. I used the natural curve of the bumpers, whatever was already fabricated in the bumpers. I don't bend them or do anything to them. If they're, if they're bent already, like in a junkyard, I can use sometimes some of the cracks and bends in that. This is bumper bovine. That's a 1999 beetle. This, this is a Monarch bumper fly. <laughs> I usually just fabricate everything from bumpers. I like the shine, and they're kind of a thing of the past. Is that what's been biting Don? Is it a midge fly? 
I got little bumpers on my arms. This is a good one too. Gates are kind of cool, and they would be a little more practical, see? Sure. People you know, could take that home, put it right on their face. Absolutely. In That's fact, cool. for a moment, I thought the Chrysler might be getting a new tailgate, but cooler heads prevailed. Or did they? Can you weld some of this back on for us? Here we go. Don't ask me, I just work here. And I am Don the Camera Guy, signing off. I couldn't tell you what bumper that would be no, off no. of. Why? No, I can't uh, tell that's you. A, that's a 1986 Vega, I think. You think? <laughs> really? <laughs> 1978 Vega? Is that what it is? A Vega? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 1972? Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's yeah, probably cool. a little big for you, but you can wear it as a nightshirt. We only have one size, so. And then send pictures. <laughs> yeah, then send pictures. <laughs> Isn't going to need any, like, uh, recuperation time or anything, is it? No. <laughs> hey, let's take them, let's take them with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a pet rock. Only heavier. <laughs> Only heavier. <laughs> you guys are brilliant. <laughs> you guys are so brilliant. <laughs> and good looking, too. <laughs> and nuttier than fruitcakes. <laughs>